welcome back to Talkin' Music with Jerry. I'm Jerry Powers, the Artistic Director for Daniel's Music Foundation. In the previous episodes, we have been learning about the musical instruments in the orchestra. We had a look at the string section, the woodwind section, and the brass section. Today, we will learn about the percussion section of the orchestra. The percussion instruments are generally used to establish and keep rhythm. To make a sound with a percussion instrument, the player must hit or strike the instrument in some way. In the first episode of Talk and Music with Jerry, we learned that instruments that can play different pitches or notes are called pitched instruments, and the ones that can play only one sound are called unpitched instruments. The percussion section of the orchestra is composed mostly of unpitched instruments, the instruments in the percussion family that are unpitched are the cymbals, the triangle, the snare, the bass drum, the tambourine, the woodblock, the maracas, the gong, and the tam-tam, and the castanets. These instruments are also called indefinite pitched instruments. There are, however, several instruments in the percussion section that can play notes. Let's have a look at some of those pitched instruments first. Timpani are pitched instruments which look like big polished bowls or upside down tea kettles, which is why they're also called kettle drums. Timpani are big copper pots that are covered with drum heads made of calf skin or plastic stretched over their tops. Timpani are tuned instruments, which means they can play different notes. The timpani player, who is called a timpanist, changes the pitch by stretching or loosening the drum heads, which are attached to a foot pedal. Timpani are a central part of the percussion family because they support rhythm, melody, and harmony. Most orchestras have four timpani of different sizes that are tuned to different pitches, and they are usually played by one musician who hits the drum heads with felt-tipped mallets or wooden sticks. Timpani players have to have very good ears because they usually need to change the pitches of the drums during performances. The xylophone is probably the most recognized of the tuned percussion instruments. The xylophone originally came from Asia and Africa, but has a Greek name that means wood sound. The modern xylophone has wooden bars arranged like the keys of a piano, which the player hits with a mallet. You can change the quality of the pitch by using different kinds of mallets, hard or soft, and by hitting the wooden bars in different ways. Attached to the bottom of the wooden bars are metal tubes called resonators, where the sound vibrates. This gives the xylophone its bright, bell-like sound, and it allows the xylophone to cut through the thick textures of the orchestra. It's a very interesting sound that has a lot of character. There are several other instruments of the percussion family that are similar to the xylophone. The marimba looks just like a xylophone, but it's a larger version of the instrument with wood or plastic resonators attached to the bottom of the wooden keys. The wood that is used for the marimba keys is softer wood, which gives the marimba a rich, dark, mellow, and rounded sound. Have a listen to this performance. There's another instrument with which many of us are quite familiar, which is called the vibraphone, known as the vibes, which has both metal bars and metal resonators. The big difference is that the vibraphone has small rotating discs inside. These discs are attached to a metal rod which turns them with the help of an electric motor. The sound is quite different because of the effect the discs create. It makes the sustained pitch vibrate. We call this vibrato, which is a slight variation of a note that is played or sung. Another pitched instrument in the percussion section is the chimes, which are metal tubes of different lengths that are hung from a metal frame. This instrument is also known as orchestral bells or tubular bells. When you strike the tubes with a mallet, they sound like the ringing bells of a church. Each chime sounds like a different pitch. 
The bells are made out of bronze. The mallet used to play the chimes has two sides, one rubber and the other wood, which both produce different tones, one softer and resonant, and the other more piercing and bright. The last pitched instrument in the percussion section is called the celesta. The celesta, or the celeste, which means heavenly in French, looks like a smaller upright piano and sounds a lot like a glockenspiel with its delicate bell-like tone, but is much softer. To make a sound on the celesta is very similar to the piano. When you press down on a key with your finger, it connects to a hammer inside that strikes a metal bar, which is suspended over wooden resonators. Celestas usually have a keyboard of 49 to 65 keys. The celesta is usually played by a keyboardist. Now let's have a look at the unpitched instruments of the percussion family, beginning with cymbals. The cymbals originally came from Asia about 5,000 years ago and were used for accompanying dancers and religious rituals. In the orchestra, cymbals are called crash or clash cymbals. They're usually made of bronze and are played by holding a cymbal in each hand and striking the two together, which usually produces a very loud and noisy sound. Although cymbals are known for being loud and noisy while they make exciting and dramatic accents, Cymbals can also be played quietly and are often used along with the bass drum and snare to keep rhythm. Cymbals may also be hung on a stand and played with mallets or drumsticks. Cymbals come in a range of sizes. Larger cymbals will make lower sounds and smaller cymbals make higher frequency sounds. You've probably seen a triangle before in a school band or maybe you have played one yourself. The triangle is usually made out of steel that is bent into the shape of a triangle with one corner left open. It makes high frequency ringing sound when you hit it. What's amazing about the triangle is that even though it's a very small percussion instrument, it can penetrate through the full force of an orchestra with one little stroke. There are many sizes of triangles and each one sounds a different pitch. You play the triangle by holding it on a string and striking it with a stick or a metal beater. The size and thickness of the triangle and the beater can change the sound the triangle makes. The snare drum is made of wood or brass with drum heads made of calfskin or plastic stretched over it. The drum heads are held by metal rims. The snare drum has a set of wire-wrapped strings stretched across the bottom head, which is called the snare, which give the snare drum its unique rattling sound when the drum is struck with the drumstick. A small switch on the side of the drum allows the player to turn the snare on or off depending on the requirements of the piece. The snare drum is an untuned drum, so it doesn't sound distinct pitches. Snare drums are used to keep the rhythm and make special sounds, such as drum rolls. You play the snare by hitting the top with drumsticks or brushes. The bass drum is the biggest member of the percussion family and therefore makes the deepest, lowest sounds. The bass drum is built like a very large snare drum. It has two drum heads, but without the snare. It's also an untuned or non-pitched instrument. You play the bass drum by hitting either drum head with mallets that have large soft heads, which are often covered with sheep's wool or felt. It can produce a lot of different sounds, from a booming sound like roaring thunder to very soft sounds like whispers. One of my favorite percussion instruments to play is the tambourine. A tambourine is a small instrument with a frame made out of wood or plastic that has pairs of metal jingles, which are also called zills, set into the edges. Both the drum head and the jingles are untuned. To play it, you hold it in one hand and tap, shake, or hit it, usually against your other hand. The wood block is a small slit drum made from a single piece of wood and used as a percussion instrument. Wood blocks 
are generally made from teak or another hardwood. When you strike the wood block, it produces a resonant and penetrating sound, which can be clearly heard above the other instruments in an orchestra. Maracas are rattles. Rattles such as these have been around for thousands of years in Africa, the Pacific Islands, and the Americas. Maracas were often made from gourds, which is a kind of squash, and filled with dried seeds, beads, or pebbles that make them rattle. The maracas can also be made of wood or plastic. The sound they make depends on what they're made of. To play them, you hold them in your hands and shake. Gongs and tam-tams are often confused for one another. The biggest difference between the tam-tam and the gong is that the tam-tam possesses no audible definite pitch. The tam-tam is a huge metal percussion instrument that looks like a cymbal, which makes an unforgettable, brilliant, booming sound. It's a type of gong, but it's made of thinner metal and is flatter than most gongs, and it has no raised boss in the center. Gongs are large, disc-shaped pieces of brass that are hit with a large, soft mallet. In the orchestra, the gong's untuned sound can be a low crash or a low rumble. There are actually gongs that make pitched sounds, and they're called bossed gongs or nipple gongs because they have this raised center or knob, and they're often suspended and played horizontally. These types of gongs can play pitch. If you have differently tuned bossed gongs, you can play melodies. Melodies can only be played on these kinds of gongs. Castanets find their origins in several different cultures, but are mostly attributed to Spanish music. They are used to punctuate the music with a distinctive clickety-clack sound. Castanets are made of two hollowed out pieces of wood tied together. To play them, you hold them with your fingers and click the two pieces of wood together. In the orchestra, castanets are sometimes mounted on a piece of wood and the percussionist plays them by hitting them with his or her hands. Castanets are very popular in dance music and flamenco music. Well, everybody, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode of Talk of Music with Jerry. There's so much more to talk about, so I'll talk to you later. It's gonna be great.